Hey there. Yeah, you. Yeah, the one sitting on the floor looking like a lost puppy dog. Looks like you've got yourself a new baby. Well, congratulations. That's one beautiful looking bundle of joy you've got there. Word on the street though is you're struggling a little bit. Let me guess. Those flabby arms of yours are burning from holding that tiny little watermelon all day long, right? Shins are kind of screaming at you from banging into the uh, car seat when you're trying to carry it. Your partner's sending you death threats and you're not entirely sure why. Well, not to worry, my friend. That's where I come in. Look, your heart's in the right place, even if your brain isn't. I mean, that's why you're watching this video, no? I thought so. Lucky for you, there are some extremely practical tips that I can share with you to whip you back into shape and get your partner singing your praises again. Well, take my hand and I will guide you through these eight extremely practical tips to help new dads get through this trying time. Just go ahead and put the baby d Hey, that's okay. We'll work on that. Hey, it's John, your internet dad from Fathercraft. In today's class, I'm teaching all you new dads and expecting parents out there my top tips and tricks for new babies. All right, so before we dive into this video, uh, I wanted to mention that it is sponsored by Miku Baby Monitor, which is my pick for coolest tech in the baby monitor market. So stay tuned till the end of this video for a special offer from Miku. All right, number one, you probably have a lot of new and unfamiliar objects in your house right now. Uh, don't wait until you have the baby to learn how to use them. Like, just don't take your baby monitor out of the box and call it a day. All right, so besides your baby monitor, make sure you get familiar with the other new gear you're going to be using daily. Like, if you have a baby carrier, practice putting it on. Even if you don't have a baby to practice with. Make sure you also have the car seat installed and secured in your car ahead of time, you know, before the birth, because it's really stressful to have someone at the hospital have to do it for you, especially when you're just trying to get the hell out of there uh, and get home and enjoy your new family. All right, new dad tip number two, prepare your house for your newborn. These are little things you can do now that will really help you during the newborn phase. First, you should definitely declutter your house in general. Throw away as much stuff as you can or donate it or let the kind people at next door know that you have a singing Billy the Bass or a fully functioning kegerator available for pickup. I told you to become a strap master. Now you should also become a stash master. Like having multiples of the same item in different rooms is a lifesaver. So put a burp cloth in your nursery, in your room, in the kitchen, anywhere you feed your baby and burp your baby, you're going to want to have uh, burp cloths around you. Also maybe stash some snacks around like energy bars or trail mix or dried fruit or flaming hot Cheetos, you know, pepperoni pizza flavored combos, which are my favorite, in all of your feeding spots. So eat while your baby eats. Just make sure you don't feed them to your baby. Obviously those are for you. And if you have pets, um, maybe ignore this tip in general. Your house and your physical setup are going to evolve as you're parenting a newborn, so don't feel like you have to set up your house how it's going to be for the next five years. You don't need to baby proof right now either. Although you may need to uh, sleep deprive proof your house, like putting foam corners on your coffee table uh, so you don't bash your shin into it in the middle of the night while holding your baby, which is definitely probably going to happen. All right, tip number three. Know that if you go to the doctor near your due date, uh, your significant other might be admitted. Paul, my brother-in-law and co-founder of Fathercraft, learned this the hard way. So his first daughter, Kinsey, was born at a different hospital than he and his wife had planned. Um, they had done the whole hospital tour thing and picked out the hospital where they wanted to deliver and felt most comfortable at. And then his wife, Jamie, had a doctor's appointment near her due date that was at the other hospital and when she got there, they said, guess what, sister? You're in labor and you can't leave. So she called Paul and said that they wouldn't let her leave and uh, told them to bring their stuff up to this other hospital. It ended up being fine, but it was a stressful start to the birthing process. And if at all possible, you want to eliminate those. So be aware that that can happen, but that doesn't mean don't go to the doctor if you feel like you need to. Be prepared and have your hospital bags packed and know that any doctor's appointment close to your due date could turn into the D-Day, you know, delivery day. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Miku Baby Monitors. And we've actually arranged a special offer for anyone watching this video, so head on over to mikucare.com slash fathercraft for all the details. So I wanted to thank Miku again for sponsoring this video. They're actually my pick for coolest tech out of any baby monitor out there. One, because they can monitor breathing automatically without the use of any wearables, which is super cool. Um, and also their audio quality is amazing. Their speakers are amazing. The sleep analytics is pretty dope and up there with Nanit. Um, and I think Miku provides the most value long-term over any other baby monitor. So thanks again to Miku. 
Okay, so this next tip may seem super obvious, but we're gonna mention it anyway. If your partner is giving birth, they will more than likely be exhausted right afterwards and may take a nap. So why is this important? Because if you're just picturing the two of you just sitting there joyfully texting your friends and family about the birth, sharing pictures and you know crying happily together, your partner is probably going to be exhausted and fall asleep pretty quickly. And then their phone is blowing up and you're not sure what to say to people or who is allowed to come and visit or when or what to do. So this tip also comes from Paul's personal experience. Uh, when Jamie was exhausted in his sleep right after giving birth to Kinsey, and they didn't have a plan ahead of time. And her phone was going off and her parents were like, did you have the baby? And Paul's like, what baby? And they're like, you know, Jamie was pregnant. And Paul's like, yeah, I know. And they're like, that baby, did you have that baby? Paul's like, oh yeah, Kinsey, we had Kinsey. And they're like, okay, when can we come? And Paul's like, come where? And, and the, the, it just, it was a, you don't want it. So make sure you have a plan about communicating and, and set expectations with eager parents and in-laws beforehand. Also, it's okay to tell people that they can wait a couple of hours or a couple of days. This time is for you and your partner and your new baby. Other people can wait. All right, let's talk about those first weeks and months at home. Oftentimes, if not most of the time, these days are gonna be hard and stressful, but you're going to be completely in love and you're going to listen to the next very important tips I give you. Tip number five is get zen about schedules. Parents of new babies can get obsessed with schedules. When will my baby get one? How do I get my baby on one? When will I have some semblance of routine in my life? When can I get my baby a manager to handle his schedule? So here's the hard truth. At first, you can't and you won't. You can't force a newborn onto his schedule. One stressful thing for me was that the hospital had told us my first son Oliver would feed every two hours or so, and he didn't. And I was freaking out about this because he wasn't doing what the doctor said he was gonna do, and it felt terrifying. Eventually, we got it all figured out, but I could have saved myself some suffering if I didn't feel so beholden to the schedule I thought needed to be followed perfectly. So new dads, listen up. Don't expect that you're not going to change your routine at all. All new relationships take compromise. You know, think about when you and your partner first moved in together. Your schedule probably changed, right? Like maybe you had to give up some of your less savory characteristics like eating Panda Express on the couch in your underwear. Same goes for your baby. It's a new relationship and you're going to learn to compromise. So meet in the middle. You know, it's okay to have her take a nap in the car seat once in a while, you know, if they fall asleep in there, as long as you don't make it a habit. You know, if you need to get stuff done around the house, strap him in with that baby carrier and teach him how to properly fold a t-shirt. The best thing you can do when you feel out of control in those first few weeks is just to trust that you'll find a new routine as a new family, it'll just take some time. <laughs> That's how adults burp themselves. Okay, tip number six, look out for your partner's health as well as your baby's. The temptation here is that you're gonna get wrapped up in only thinking about your baby. They're new and amazing and you're in charge of keeping them alive. You're probably going to think about your baby first, yourself second, and your partner last. But listen, you have to think about your partner right now. Think about it. They've gone from being pregnant and fussed over with everyone, um, saying how cute and amazing they look, asking how they're feeling, you know, weekly OB visits, to giving birth and whoosh. All that focus shifts to your baby. Your partner is expected to adapt, be a perfect and amazing mother, and oh yeah, by the way, get back to looking and feeling exactly how they did prepartum. Imagine going from total and utter support to nothing for your exhausted, bleeding, sleep-deprived, hormone-shifting body. It takes conscious thought to think about your partner, and it's really important that you do. Support your partner postpartum by recognizing that they're healing physically and emotionally, and that they need you. And this goes for any type of family, whether you're adopting or you have a pregnant spouse or whatever, your partner needs your support. Like for us, although Beth didn't give birth, there were still a bunch of hormonal changes that were going on. Um, and all of those things emotionally that she was going through um, that I at times didn't pay attention to um, and would have really helped if I did. So be sure, regardless of how your baby comes in your life, that you're paying close attention to your partner. But at the end of the day, whatever they're going through, just listen. You don't have to fix it for them. Actually, they probably don't want you to. Honestly, most of the time, all we want when we're struggling is for someone to say, it sounds really hard and I hear you and I'm sorry you're going through that. All right, tip number seven. When people offer to help, be specific about what you need. People who don't have kids don't know what's helpful and will probably say, you know, let me know if you need anything. If they do, be sure to take them up on it. So say something like, we could really use your help with dinner or I'd love to take you up on your offer. Can I request dinner? You know, anything is great. Or we have 
know, XYZ food allergies, or we love the surf and turf with caviar to start from the local steakhouse, or Doritos Locos Tacos for me, or Double Crunch Wrap Supreme for my wife. People want to help, but often don't know how to. And if they really didn't meet it when they offered, they'll be quickly cured of that bullshit by buying you a steak dinner. Everyone wins. All right, tip number eight, and this is probably one of the most important ones on the list. When something goes wrong, cut yourself some slack. Remember that if you're the kind of person who's watching this video, it's because you care. So not to spill all of Paul's dirty parenting secrets, but uh, once he was changing Kendi's diaper on a bed, and she kind of crawled off, not kinda, she did crawl off and he felt horrible about it. I mean, Kinsey's fine and eventually he got over it and eventually she stopped having to wear a helmet. Drill it into your brain that it's totally normal to make mistakes and you're gonna get over it as well. There's no perfect parenting. Just do your best, be loving, listen, and remember that kids are awesome and durable. All right, that's it. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more anti-patriarchy parenting advice. Um, and if you've got a favorite tip you've learned that we didn't cover, make sure to put it in the comments below and we'll do our best to respond. Oh, and one more thing. If you're listening to this and thinking, damn, that's a lot to remember, Gina. First, panic because there's a lot more to remember. And then head over to fathercraft.com slash checklist. We've got a free set of checklists that's going to help you remember all the shit you need to. So check it out at fathercraft.com slash checklist. And uh, don't forget to floss and set up your 401k and spay and neuter your pets. All right, thanks for sticking around for all of our new dad tips and I will see you guys in the next video.